All right. Do we want to try to find you ones? <laughs> I just think it would be funny. <laughs> Do you mean like introduce ourselves at the same time? Yeah, and whoever gets their first wins. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We should count it down though. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> In three, two, one. Hello, Hello and welcome to the podcast with three friends. Boy. I'm your host, podcast Esther, and I use she and they pronouns. <laughs> I, I forgot the fucking it. intro. I forgot the fucking intro. <laughs> Read it. It's just linked. I just off the cuff, baby. Well, how long has it been? Fucking like three months off the fuck. You even, anyway, you even I'm it. Alex, and I use he him. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Esther, and I use she and they pronouns. <laughs> and they use they them pronouns <laughs> and today we're going to talk about vocaloid <laughs> we can't use this oh, you can't use this <laughs> oh can you tell me i haven't recorded for like oh, oh my god my stone hurts so bad <laughs> we haven't recorded for like four months i couldn't breathe <laughs> I don't know do you so want to do, do, do a real fucking intro? You can do one for no. safety, but I'm going to beat your ass if you try to put it in, if this is actually listenable. <laughs> Welcome to Wiki Boys, a podcast where three friends dive into the wonderful world of fandom wiki pages. I am your host today, Alex, and I use he, him pronouns. I am Aster, and I use she and they pronouns. And I'm Rook, and I use they, them pronouns. And we're going to talk about Vocaloid. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, hell yeah, Vocaloid time. Um, we're back, baby! We're back, we're back, and it is, it's been a while since we've recorded, so if this, yeah. one's, if this one's like this... It's fine, it's we gonna have be two like editors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna link the page that I started on because I thought it was very interesting. Oh, oh yes, okay. vocal timeline. Um, we should talk about our vocal timeline. Shit. Yes. Let's talk about <laughs> Oh we should. Yes. Um Alex. What um, is yours? For my shit, I started listening to Vocaloid when I was like eleven and uh if you are familiar with like some uh, like theories of growth that just became the one thing that I listened to so now I'll go back and listen to Vocaloid and it'll make my brain happy so it's like my primary music yeah. nowadays <laughs> I guess we could lead um, up because I'm like the midpoint of I listened to Vocaloid when I was younger but I never got into the lawyer or anything I just listened to music and nowadays I mostly listen to covers of Vocaloid music more than actual Vocaloid songs <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I am definitely on the, the farthest thing where, like, I could probably count on one hand the amount of Vocaloid songs that I knew when I was 13. <laughs> and the reason we actually decided to do Vocaloid was over this break, I just went, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to get really into Vocaloid now. Um, you had us tea posing in your room. I literally, like, <laughs> y'all dragged me into a watch together and we were like, here's, like, a bajillion Vocaloid songs. Original and, Vocaloid like, songs and then some yes, new original ones. original Vocaloid songs. Original Vocaloid songs and... Like, we went through, like, the classics, we went through new shit, we went through, like, <laughs> so I have, like, the world's most chaotic Vocaloid playlist. <laughs> it literally will go from, like, World is Mine to, like, something that was released, like, two weeks ago. <laughs> um, and that's how it should be. But, yes. yeah. And that's how you should listen to Vocaloid. You should listen to World is Mine and then another song, and the World is Mine and then another song. <laughs> this is true, because the world is Miku's. It is. <laughs> It's her world, and we're all just living in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So the reason I picked out the timeline is because I thought it was super interesting to think about. I think um, it's also important. It's important to understand, like, who came first. Yeah. Yeah. I did not know it was Kaito. I did not know it was yeah, Kaito. Yeah, I, I always yeah. thought it was, I mean, because it seems like the first, the first released were Leon and Lola, but, like, fucking Kaito and Mako were there. Yeah, I even, forgot even how sooner. early Kaito was. Yeah. Yeah, he he's he's V zero. Yeah, Grandpa, Grandpa. Yeah. So I guess the official like he was not released until later. Mm-hmm. But um, two thousand and three, July twenty fourth, an album titled "History of Logic System" was released. This contained the first commercial render of Vocaloid vocals, later known as Miko and Kaito. Ah. Also, I think I it's Mako. Mako. Yeah. yeah, I think it's also interesting, and obviously, like we'll have to talk about the Queen herself, um, <laughs> Miku. But, like, for the longest time, I did not know that Miku was actually not one of the oldest Vocaloids. No, she's V1? Or is she V2? I thought she was V2. I think she's V2. I think she's V2 onward. I can open Miku. But that's just her Um, power. Yeah, so she came out in June 2007. Ah. Yeah. she was, like... Yeah, she's a V2, baby. Yeah. God. Which is so weird to think about, because... Uh, well, we have the wiki in front of us. We can talk about that. I know. <laughs> I'm just looking I'm just at Miku. Looking. <laughs> I'm trying so fucking hard to find... Okay, there's my Vocaloid preparation notes. Yeah. <gasps> Wait, oh, preparation. I thought you said appropriation. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> appropriation of Miku. I want to... I, I, when I look at Vocaloid designs, I do want to appropriate Vocaloid culture. I want to look like this. They look so cool! <laughs> I want to look like um, a Vocaloid. <laughs> I guess, because we're talking about it, um, so the original Vocaloids were Kaito, uh, Mako, Miriam, Lola, and Leon. Mm. Which, I don't think I've ever even heard Lola or Leon. Yeah, I don't know anything about Lola and Leon. <laughs> I have only heard them, because, like, getting really into Vocaloid also led to me, like, every Vocaloid voice bank! It's just, like, a 40-minute video. Ugh. I haven't finished it, even. Question and, asked, like, side got, like, note. Have you watched any Talkloid videos? <laughs> I've heard, um, About I was them. watching, like, a an introduction to Vocaloids, <laughs> and they had an example of, like, one of the Talkloids, mm. which are wild that I didn't know that existed, but mm. I've not seen a lot of videos of them. Yeah. I just, like... That is also a genre of existence. videos where people would just make Vocaloids try to talk, and usually it ends up sounding a little weird. <laughs> it always sounds very weird, because they are not designed to do no. that. I remember that a lot. Actually, that was more what I was watching, was, like... <laughs> Miku Miku dance videos where they would and it was almost always the Japanese Miku voice bank because it did not sound good. No. Um. <laughs> it, it's really, really, really hard making the Japanese voice bank sound like English. I think there's only like there's really only a few producers that are able to do it. Even like yeah. moderately well. And I think I, I think I, one of the, sorry, mm-hmm. tangent, small tangent I think one of the coolest examples I've seen admittedly I'm not very exploratory these days uh, Mayo Dio managed to make um Oops, I forgot his name. Oh, they really like Fukase? That might be... No, 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 not Fukase. Uh, Kyo. Uh, Mio Dio managed to make oh, yeah, Kyo, yeah. Kyo's Japanese voice bank sound like English pretty well, uh, covering um, Monster, that one super popular Gumi English song. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yep, sorry. The page that I've just linked is um, very interesting. It is a catalog of the Hall of Fame. I love uh, the Hall of Fame. Songs. Which is all oh. um, 100,000 plus views on Nico Nico. Yeah. That's very sweet. <laughs> and I think it's very cool that they are all catalog- cataloged. Like, there's, um, and there's also, like, some criteria for mm. um, songs released on YouTube, songs released on Billy Billy, you know? Mm. I think it's I think it's really interesting that they all have different metrics because the audiences are so different. Yeah, it's great. It's just very cool, and this is a cool page, and you should look at it because... This is also... Um, if you want to know about music that is foundational, yeah, <laughs> this is it. This is also really interesting because it's showing me how many different kind of companies had. I think it's a really interesting thing to see how many different companies had their fingers in like this Vocaloid pie. Mm. Because mm-hmm. I always think of like Krypton, maybe Yamaha. Yamaha has, has a f- quite a few. Yamaha has mm. quite a few, and like I know there's Krypton some Sega ones. Is a big one, but like. Yeah, fucking Sega. What? Huh? Sega is in a lot of things that you don't expect Sega to be in because everybody knows Sega is the Sonic company. 
Yeah, Sega, yeah, Sega does so many things. Yeah, yeah so, Sega does video games, and that's it. No, <laughs> you know, wrong. No, wrong. wrong. Um, but yeah, this I is found them like sponsoring idols before. It's so yeah. fucked up, fucked up, fucked up. Anyway, Sega does a lot of things, yep. um, including vocal. I just wanted to. We're talking about vocal yeah. I wanted to make the Hall of Fame known because cute. Yeah, it's very sweet. Um. So another thing we did to prepare for this episode, we all sat down and we picked out like three to four uh, Vocaloids that we all like and wanted to talk about. Yeah. And we all got like one like big pillar foundational one and then some that we just like. Yeah. My, I, I struggled because I don't have like a specific Vocaloid I listen to because I, like I said, I mostly listen to covers and those covers yeah. just use Miku. <laughs> yep. Or well, the <laughs> original songs like... of those covers. Yeah, you're you're really like a, a Yadita. Yeah, person. I like listening to. I, I I really love listening to Vocaloid music, like with the synthesized voice. There's something about the synthesized voice that's very nice to me. But I really, really, really love watching like, I love putting on like six covers of Villain in a row and hearing how everybody delivers <laughs> it differently. It's so interesting to me. I love hearing different people do different takes. I think my favorite mm-hmm. one is Waswald. So many people do that differently. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, me Walls me use cover is king for me. <laughs> me use cover is very good. Uh, what was the one that I listened to recently that I really liked? Anyway, we can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have music we want to talk about later. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the the one that I picked out for my uh, foundational ones were the Kagaminas. Yeah. Yeah, I... Because they're my babies. Yep. Um, you I should... With... I'm, I'm, I'm counting down the days until you buy Kagamini figures. Uh, I'm surprised that I haven't already. Honestly... <laughs> I I actually not exactly in preparation. But, um, it just sort of happened to coincidentally. Like I started following an account that posts Miku and other Vocaloid figurines. So now I keep haunting um, my good dear friends with cool pictures of Miku figurines. Mm. <laughs> to which I say this figure is like three hundred dollars, and if I bought it, you would have to beat me with a big. <laughs> oh yeah, I only send the ones that are easily three hundred dollars because oh. they look good as hell. They look great. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. But yes, for my big foundational one, I picked uh, Magrini Luca. I picked Gumi. I picked Gumi. She's my um, favorite. <laughs> I've taken charge of this episode. That's my episode now. You're fine. Um, Go ahead. Fine. <laughs> uh, some of the cool stuff um, about the K- Kagaminos that is kind of like uh, cataloged on this page that I never knew about um, was they were specifically, uh, their names were picked to be Ren and Len uh, because... R and L, right and left. Oh, oh! And their last name, uh, uh, Kagami, which is mirror, and Ne, which is sound. So it's like a mirror sound. Oh that's my god, like that's so cool! I didn't know that. <laughs> I think that's really cool. That makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. Anyway, I like them because they're so fucking yellow. <laughs> they're really fucking yellow. They're, they're very yellow and very cute. Mm-hmm. I was kind of interested because, like, I, I wasn't sure which foundational one I wanted to pick because I was like, well, shit, I really only know Miku, and then I'm into other Vocaloids. Um, so I was looking at the Kagamins because they are so fucking yellow, and I I realized, like, I was looking at their relations, and they are not technically siblings. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> they're, they're not technically twins. They're not technically twins. They're not technically siblings. Because, and that's one of the things that I noticed was... Wait, where is that are, on the page? Uh, if you look at relations, uh, the only relations they have are to Hatsune Miku and Megurine Luka as fellow members of the character vocal series. That's it. <laughs> like, and there are other places where they're like, yeah, they're not related um, just simply um, because they didn't want to limit people's creativity. God. Um but yeah, they didn't want to make it, so they could not sing any kind of romantic Oh, yeah. Songs Krypton originally had the intention of distributing them as twins, but this was not adopted. Krypton stated that they approved of the many different interpretations of Rin and Len's relationship, and they saw it in different works. Krypton's final announcement was that the Kagmans were, were neither siblings nor lovers. <laughs> right? Strike those both out, I guess. <laughs> so, vocalists are, are sort of notoriously, like, lean on camera. Oh, because... yeah. They're toys to play with. Which is very right, interesting. Yeah. I am very, I am, I'm always so interested in stuff like this where people can just play with them. It's so interesting to me. I love it. I love stuff that enables creativity. 
and ingenuity. Mm-hmm. It's so good. But I'm going to be real. I, I still things. get weirded out if you ship the Kagam. <laughs> I, I, oh, I, absolutely. I've <laughs> thought of them as siblings since I first learned that they existed, so I and, feel weird. <laughs> yeah, and I think there are a lot of people who are like, yeah, they're siblings. And still And do also, it. I'm going to ship them. And yeah. If, you, if <laughs> you do that, you go to hell. Yeah, if you choose to you go make to it super incest mega weird. <laughs> Yeah, you go anyway, to Super Mega Help. God, they're so fucking yellow, huh? <laughs> I am just linking all of the stuff that I uh, acquired when I was going on down their page. Oh, so I picked out a couple of songs that I think are kind of important. <laughs> so, um, the the links I just sent is hell. Um, yeah, <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> because it's impossible for HTML code to totally understand. No, it doesn't do Japanese correctly. <laughs> It doesn't. It hates it. Um, yep. Uh, so the three songs that I picked here, um, I went ahead and s- picked uh, Remote Control, um, mm. Butterfly on Your Right Shoulder, mm-hmm. and uh, Rocky. I completely forget that they were attached to Rocky. Yeah, because yeah. Rocky is a cover song in my mind. It's a cover song. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so even the song page for Rocky has, um, like, notable... Um, covers. Mm. Yeah, it has derivatives, section derivatives, synthesized covers, human cover. God. And if you look at the human covers, it's all like super foundational names. Yeah. <laughs> it's like After the Rain, um, so... Kazuna AI, AI, huh? Yeah. Kazuna AI I is there, Anybody yeah. that sings eventually does a Roki cover. Uh, Japanese singers. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes English ones. Sometimes English ones. <laughs> like, it's all... It, 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 mostly because it's like it's not a strict duet, but it's also a duet. Mm. Um, and the thing that I didn't know is it's not technically a Len song either. Mm. Um, the original version is Rin and the producer. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Len is so not in the song. Kagame Rin and Mikoto P. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Thank which, you so much for these lores. <laughs> yeah, which, like, if you've ever seen, um, like, the Mika Mika dance of it is fairly popular yeah. because it was in, um, it, it was in Project Eva, and then people just rip stuff out of Project Eva all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you've definitely seen the Mika Mika dance, and the Mika Mika dance is both of them. <laughs> but not the producer, because that would be really weird. Yeah. God, that's so wild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then also picked remote control because remote control is it's uh, good. It's a good fucking it's song. A good remote control is a good fucking song. It's also the only one I picked out that is actually a duet. Yeah. <laughs> of the of the two. I feel That's, like people don't use st- them as often anymore, and I'm sad about it. I feel so happy whenever no. I find a song that uses them. It's it's only it's Miku's world. <laughs> it's Miku's world. I know. When's the last time that new vocaloids are released? Because I think I think um, we're up to V five, but I don't know when that was. V5 was I think pretty recent. Let me poke at the timeline. Hold mm. on. Good thing I gave you the timeline. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> so a bunch of... In 2018, a bunch of Okay, V5. yeah. July 12th, Vocaloid 5 was re- revealed and released, and then a shit ton came out on July 12th. Uh, um, I've not seen any of these guys. Oh, they're, oh, God, the human ones are in here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the ones that the just look like ones. human people. <laughs> Yeah, that are really weird, and I don't necessarily like it. It's oh, so hmm. I'm, I'm so tickled whenever a Vocaloid is just a human person. Because we have, like... Fucking... I, don't know how I, feel. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> I've never seen those fucking Vocaloids in my life, and I'm going to say straight up I don't like them. <laughs> I love that Vocal- uh, V5 is the, peop- the ones that look like human people, and then V1 and V2, which are objects... <laughs> Yeah, V1 and V2 that are fucking swords. <laughs> oh, it's... Well, V1 oh, it's... was originally a hairpin and a, and now is now a fan. Oh, okay. Uh, V2 is the one that's a sword. <laughs> <laughs> I really only think about is sword. It's fine. I, yeah. Maybe we should explain a little bit about <laughs> uh, VY1 and VY2. Uh, they're on my list. They're on your list. Okay, we can come back to them though yeah. because we should talk about that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we'll have to we'll have to get back to them. It's fine. They're on um, my list. Um, 
I feel I also like... went and grabbed um, Ia, um, Ia, 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 because I like the video for it a lot. <laughs> That's incredibly valid of you. It's incredibly valid of me because it's a good fucking video. Mm-hmm. And the last thing I grabbed uh, was uh, Nero, who is kind of the producer that I think of when I think of these two. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Nero has done a lot of uh, blend songs, a lot of rin songs, <laughs> a lot of ones that, like, if, you, if you're, if you like, in these circles, you've definitely heard them. Yeah. Like, um... God, I forgot Nero like did Tokyo this Teddy disease Bear. called Love. Yeah. That song fucks. Everybody should listen to <laughs> the Mapha Mapha's cover of it. Everybody should listen to Mapha Mapha just in general. <laughs> no, just, like, scrolling down... Um, their discography list is like, uh, yes, mm. I know. Oh my uh, god, Lost One's Weeping. <laughs> I always forget who yeah. originally did these songs. Yeah, yeah fucking. <laughs> yeah. And whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Mm-hmm. Um, also, did we want to did we want to go back and talk about Miku at some point? I have a, just a list of Miku songs, <laughs> so I think we should touch that at the I end. I mean, what okay. is there to talk about with Miku? I think everybody knows about Miku. Blue. Also, her, blue. her page is fucking huge, as expected. Yeah. There's like, you could um, do an entire episode about Miku. You really you could. You could do. You could. Oh, um, I think uh, we could at least read Miku's achievements, maybe. Because every, every Vocaloid has an achievement section, which I think is very cute. It is very cute. Wait, what? Um, before... Where's her achievement? Oh, it's like at the bottom of her page. It's like under oh the Turbia and everything. The Vocaloid wiki is very good in that they have segments for. <gasps> let me read these. Oh my god, yeah, hey, they Trends, do. sales, wow. reaction, impact, trivia, and achievements, which is real good. Oh, and also a misc section. Instead of just having it be all under trivia. Mm hmm. Thank you, Vocaloid wiki. It is very good. So, before we move on, I want to read um, the uh, Kagamine's achievements. Yeah. Yeah, please do. Read um, off the things you have strapped to your fridge. <laughs> these are the, these are the things that I put up on my fridge to say how I love them. Um, they are the first dual uh, voice banks released, so two of them in the same package. Yep. They're the only one in V two that are like that. Um, uh, Len is the first male V two. Uh, they were also the first ones to be updated, so they were the ones that, that made the transition from V two to V three. Mm. Um, Len is actually not the same gender as the provider, so, um, Len is a woman's voice. And, uh, I don't know what it actually means by Len is the first male vocaloid to be appended. So, I assume that's that they added more meaning. The appends seem to be supplemental pieces of software that you can get that offer you different ways to tune it. DLC. That, yeah, basically... (laughs) Vocaloid okay, well, DLC. here's a page that's... for Hatsune Miku append, which is apparently meant, uh, it's one of them that's meant to make her sound sweeter. Oh. Yeah, so it, so, yeah. it changes, it's just like, different the tone tuning of things. the voice. Um, like, a lot of the older ones have, like, a fucking a shit ton of them. Um, like, Luca, like, if you look through here, um, the voice banks, like, Kagamin Rin, power, warm, sweet, yeah. <laughs> cold, serious. Like, that's sort of what the app hens do. Yeah, the, the um, Vocaloid pages are so extensive because they have, like, all these tabs, and I completely phase out of them. So even when I look at Vocaloid pages, I'm only looking at, like, uh, an eighth of the information about them. <laughs> yeah. The Vocaloid and that's wiki is very fair. good to read and look at. Um, it's so helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, do we want to move on to, like, your guys' big ones? Sure. Um, you can go ask her because I <laughs> honestly yeah. I, 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 I I didn't know what to talk about for this because like I said I mostly listen to covers so I didn't really know what to do so I just kind of picked ones that maybe we could all talk about <laughs> and explore Yeah, <laughs> instead enough. of me lecturing because I just I got nothing <laughs> I'm a bad so, podcaster this time um, yeah I picked Megrini and Luca because fucking pink um, I also, looking back, I realized I picked only pink ones. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I um, still in my head picture you with pink hair, even though it's been not pink for longer than it was pink. Mm-hmm. Um, so, some lores. Uh, her birthday is soon. Oh! Aw! Her birthday is January 30th. <laughs> oh, shit! Aww. Yeah! This is um, gonna come out after her birthday! So significantly happy, after 
happy both early and belated birthday, Miss Margarita Luca. Um, <laughs> she uh, is one of her achievements is, is she was actually the first bilingual oh, uh, shit. vocaloid. She oh, was the first one released with Japanese and, and English voice bank. Very cool. Um, so according to to Krypton. Uh, she's like the second or third most popular vocaloid. Her popularity sort of wavers, so um, but her songs often would manage to unseat Miku's uh, songs like when they would first come out. Oh, like I didn't know she was would... used for Popipo. Yeah, yeah she's she's the the okay. Popipo. I she never know Popipo. what what vocaloids were used in what songs. No, me neither. <laughs> um, she also has like a fucking bajillion yeah. happens like soft hard straight like um you know oh <laughs> I, I patched love... out the gay yeah what? i know uh she, she has a uh straight uh english straight version uh intended to have the same vocal tone as the japanese version um and also in general her her vocal was supposed to uh, Luca was intended to be a moody sounding vocal with a soft sound and was voice acted that represents a more experienced singer. Um, she hmm. was also sort of meant to be, oh, somewhere here it says like she was meant to be kind of like seductive. <laughs> <laughs> um, that didn't really, yeah, here we go. In her trivia. She does well, have a shit ton of love the... songs. Well, the software that was in the alpha stage of development, Krypton was hoping for a voice that sounded sexy. However, due to the <laughs> level of softness in their results, the vocals were unable to achieve this. So, like... I feel uh, like every every version, they're like, I, we want this one to be sexy, and it just doesn't work. None of them are sexy. You guys don't understand. Everybody likes making edgy Vocaloid songs. Uh, right, right. We want edgy We vocaloids. need growls and aspirations. <laughs> <laughs> or, I don't um, think aspirations also, is the right word. This isn't like it's not canon because, like I said, um, the vocalists are notoriously very slim on canon. But like, yeah. I have a very strong feeling that Megarini Luca is a lesbian <laughs> <laughs> because there's like four, like two or three really prominent songs where she is like in love with Miku. <laughs> oh right, yeah. Um, I will be thinking of World Dance Dance Hall. Thank you for asking. I, and Magnet. Yeah. I mean that. Icon- Magnet. That iconic shit. Um, Happy synthesizer with was Gumi, right? Happy Synthesizer yeah. is Gumi, but it's also it's also <laughs> sort of a love song. Not necessarily between Gumi and Luca, but it's like they're singing a love song yeah. together. And so I just feel very strongly that Luca is a lesbian. <laughs> um, when like one of her biggest songs is her just like in love with yeah. Gumi. Um, and also she continues to be the first bilingual vocaloid in future versions because she's a trendsetter. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, she's the first bilingual vocaloid, first female bilingual vocaloid, first bilingual vocaloid to be updated, first bilingual vocaloid four. So she's, a, like I said, she's a trendsetter. Also, um, she's in a Homestuck album. Ah. <laughs> Luca Wait, can be which? heard in the original musical score Arisen Anew from a Homestuck album called Alter- <gasps> Alternia Bound. Ah. Oh, she's a, she was a Arisen Bound? Ah. No, no, no. I need to open this now. I need to listen to this. Fight. We need to stop. I didn't realize that was what her. Was again? <laughs> Uh, uh, Arisen Anew. It's the first song on uh, Alternia Bound. I'm listening to this right now. So I guess that Arania just sounds like Luca in my head. Holy shit! Okay. God, that's really good. Um, I did not know that. Uh, also, her oh appearance God. is very interesting. She has some interesting notes. Um uh, according to Kay, who is asked by Krypton to illustrate her, her design was made to be asymmetrical due to her bilingual software, so she would look different in various angles. Unlike previous mascots in the series, her costume is not based on a school uniform because she is 20. Um, <laughs> oh my god, right, I forgot there was, like, there's a lot of discourse about the songs that she has because, like, Mika and Gumi are, like, kids. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, I understand, but, like, also... I come at it as the vocaloids are actors in the songs that they perform. Yeah, and I'm also mm-hmm. like, when it comes down to it, Miku is an instrument. She's yeah. Like, she's she's not literally a 16-year-old girl. Okay, so calm down. Um, Stop. As- <laughs> I know. Her dress was designed to look old-fashioned to make her represent the past. 
Um, as a form of contrast, the infinity symbol on her neck area represents sound around. Her design incorporates woodwind and brass instruments. Okay. The gold curl design on her chest mimics brass instruments and a circulatory organ. The blue jewel near her throat represents moisture in the air and water drops. What? <laughs> what? I think this is more clear on her. Hey, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. She's based off of woodwind and brass instruments and they put water drops. So she's based off of spit. <laughs> Stop it. Amazing. Go on. Go on. Every day I think about the brass players and how they had to just like dump their valves onto the band room floor so there was just spit puddles after practice. That's uh, an aside. Spit but that's a universal experience. It's a universal experience and it sucks. It's gross. Yeah. Ugh. So these these elements are a lot more clear on her V2 design. Uh, her V4, which is very pretty and I love her, um, does not quite have these elements as strongly. Like no, the- she's more stripped down. Quite literally. Yeah. Um, but also, she's gorgeous and I love her. I hate her, like, bicep horns. Yeah. <laughs> These oysters <laughs> attached to her biceps. Oh, and also, so, um, I, I did this at least. I picked a song uh, for each <laughs> vocal aid because... You know, I, I'm not as prolific, but uh, I also picked Happy Synthesizer, uh, which is Easy Pop featuring Gumi and Luca. It's good. It's Yay. cute. Um, I love Happy Synthesizer. I learned the dance to that when I was in middle oh school. Oh, God, of course you Long did. <laughs> oh, and of course, my final trivia point for her is pink. <laughs> pink. <laughs> pink. I didn't even think to pick out songs for the different vocaloids. I ended well, up <laughs> making a huge fucking list of producers instead. <laughs> I That's a good list to have. Yeah. <laughs> but do you want to talk about, like, your first one, Rook? Oh, Gumi. Let me like her. Gumi. Gumi. I learned some things about her. I didn't read too much into her page, because a lot of it is actually, like, mostly just her voice banks. <laughs> her pages. Um, yeah. But I learned that Gumi was voiced by a Philippine-Japanese singer and voice actress, uh, Megumi Nakajima. And Gumi is a childhood oh. nickname for her. Aww. And her software name was actually Megpoid, which was taken from the provider's name Megumi. The second half, Poid is a combination of Poi, resembling, and Lloyd, like Vocaloid. The n- implied name of this product is Megumi, like Vocaloid. <laughs> which is cute. That's really cute. Yeah, it seems so that to Gumi has a lot of confusion. Because I remember <laughs> also looking at Gumi's page, because I also like her. I like her. Um, <laughs> Less experienced overseas fans often mislabel Gumi as a megapoid rather than a vocaloid, and sometimes dismiss that she has a vocaloid entirely. <laughs> I think that's old <laughs> First, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty old. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen that mistake been made in a while. Yeah. But I definitely remember, like back in, I like to call them like the vocaloid dark ages, um, where like it was really <laughs> hard to have anybody sit down and like, here's what vocaloid's about. That's the kind of shit that, like, I would have thought. And we'll talk about mistakes I made as a baby Vocaloid fan. Because <laughs> I had specifically have characters. Oh, yeah, you want to talk yeah. about a story. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but it's, Megumi's achievements are a little... Or, well, I said Megumi. Uh, Gumi's achievements <laughs> are a little weird because it's mo- most of her achievements are, like, the first Vocaloid from Internet Co. Limited. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of like, yeah, all right. Um, but her trivia is that with 17 voice banks total, Magu- uh, G- I keep wanting to say Megumi, goddammit. Gooby is currently the vocalist with the most voice bank. Proud of her. Wow. I'm proud of her. Proud of her. Her range. <laughs> she, she has the range. <laughs> I love, I do remember looking through her, her appens. It's so funny. Like, <laughs> native, native fat, adult, mellow adult, sweet, natural sweet. Whisper, soft whisper, power, power, fat, English, falsetto, talk. Like, it's so... I love the way that the app ends are named. They're so fucking funny. Yeah. I, Pat, like... Music words are weird. <laughs> I don't even know if those are, like, common music words or if they're just vocaloid words. I don't know. Power, fat is, like, just straight up... It's so funny. Yeah. Well, looking at Gumi's song section is like, yep, these are all Gumi songs. These are Gumi's. Echo, I think, is probably one of the most known ones because it's uh, Gumi is a, a, known in most mostly English songs because she has a really good English voice. And there's like, Her I actually never took really down really that good. producer, but whoever it is that made Monster also made like a shit ton. Maybe also Echo, maybe maybe made Echo. I have to check. 
I made a shit ton of English uh, gaming songs that just ended up getting super um, covered. It's possible you're thinking of Kira. Maybe. Because Kira does a lot of... Let me look up Gumi Monster. Eng English vocaloids. Yeah, I could be... Uh, yep, I'm thinking of Kira. Yep. Who did so not, I... not make Crusher, I don't think. I think it was... So yes, if you are... I, I actually have this recommendation um, <laughs> later, but if you're looking for English vocaloids, Kira does fucking fantastic English vocaloids. Yeah. So good. I have nothing to say about Gumi. I like her. She's green. I like her. I she's just... green and she's cute. <laughs> also, I do want to talk about, she has a bunch of different designs for a lot of her voices. Yeah. Um, and I like to look at her. I really like the sweet one with these cool, like, stirrup um, tights. I just like to look at her. She's also, very just, just She's to credit it properly, Echo was made by Circus P. Ah, ah. Okay. Um, All right. But yeah, Cheems, I like to look at her. Yeah, she's cute. She's very cute. My, my, my thing on Vocaloids is I like how they look and how they sound, and then I listen to cover songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the idea of Vocaloids, and then I go and listen to a whole bunch of UTTI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that I think they sound are... bad. I just like Good. I like listening to human voice. <laughs> That's my thing. <laughs> Sometimes I want a synth voice, but usually I want a human voice. And that's totally valid. Yeah. Okay. That's why the producers are the backbone of Vocaloid Society. Yes. The it's not, not the Vocaloid, vocaloids, vocaloids, it's the producers. Society. It's absolutely the producers. Maybe. Like, we're talking about the Vocaloids, but really we should just be picking producers and then going, like, Through uh, their whole library of work. Through their whole libraries, because... That's what Vocaloid is. Vocaloid is not the yeah. characters. It's the producers. And I think a that's, very interesting instrument. That's mm. sort of one of but. the things that I remember, like, why, you know, Dark Ages of Vocaloid, like, people did not talk about the producers nearly as much, at least from my perspective, um, because, like, I, I mean, always People felt still like, don't really talk about producers. They just, like, well, partake in their okay. work. Because so well, like, most like, producers like to be anonymous. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is this is true, and when I say talk about producers, I mean like credit them as like the maker of oh, the song. Yeah, that's that definitely was changed. not what I saw happening. It was like Miku made this song. I, like, at least, fu- at least in English fandom, I don't know how Japanese fandom yes. functions. I don't speak Japanese, yes. so I can only speak right. for the English fandom. That yes, it's absolutely credited to Miku, and yes, that has that been is changing exactly what it was like. a lot. Yeah. So like, I, once I get to one of mine, I have to tell a story about how I had to go fucking hunt down. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, yeah. Fuck me. I've heard this story already. Um, so, <laughs> so for my uh, second one, I kind of just picked out two that I don't really want to like actually talk about. That I have like you just want to mention words. I just want to mention. Um, I want to mention Oliver. Yeah, oh, yeah. because Oliver he's, is very cute. He's just a little guy. He's just a little boy. He's just a little guy. Just a little guy, voiced by a little guy. Sneaky. He's very little. And he's also puppy cat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. He's puppy cat. I always he's forget that. I always forget he's puppy cat. It's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So he's voiced by like actual like choir boy, like a British choir boy. Yeah, thirteen years old. Um. Uh, never been revealed for legal I, reasons. <laughs> yeah, never been revealed for legal reasons. It, to my memory, he's like the first fully English. Like, there are bilingual ones before mm, this. What's his achievements? That was, like, English, English. Oh. Um, okay, that doesn't list it as one of his achievements. <laughs> first English Vocaloid for V3. Okay. So. I still can't believe that he's fucking puppy cat. I always feel like, every time you tell me that, I'm like, that's fake, right? No, it's real. <laughs> nope, it's fa- it's real. He's puppy cat. Um, no, it's in the trivia section. Yeah. Since Oliver was the first English Vocaloid developed since the Hot CD Miku Facebook post. <laughs> The no, first no. English Vocaloids. Yeah, less informed fans have been classified as the first English Vocaloid. This is not the first case because Leon and Lola were released in English for 2004. Mm. Uh, however, nobody knows about Leon and Lola, no. so it doesn't matter. If it's The thing with Vocaloids is it really seems like if it's not like a cartoon that... Like, uh, I get, like an anime boy or an anime girl that represents the Vocaloid, no one cares about them. <laughs> that's true. Nobody cares about Lola Never and Leon, seen it, but okay. Never, buddy, never seen anybody use Cyber Diva. <laughs> I'm like, no, but you have to give it an anime girl. 
<laughs> then people give a shit. <laughs> also, I think it's important to note that he has a Twitter account. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love to look at it. It's very cute. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any songs for him. I just think I can he's open cute. the songs tab. What are you doing? Yeah, just I've listed there was really nothing that I was like stuff that I cared about. Mm. Oh, that's right. A lot of people use him in like edgy songs. <laughs> right. Because it's fun to make uh, a, little <laughs> a small child be cursed. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What are his notable songs? He very much has like a very haunted Victorian doll look about him. Like he's covered in bandages. Like this kid yeah. isn't okay. He's very skinny. He has like a little military boy hat on. I don't like, know if I actually recognize any of his songs. I super don't. Um, yeah, I super don't. I'd have to listen to I them if like I were it. to recognize them. Because I at least don't recognize them by title or picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, God, he's gonna, he got like, used in a Five Nights at Freddy's song. <laughs> Yeah, he was. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love when... Because uh, Fukase is one of those ones that looking at his song section is like, fuck, okay, there's a Kokichi Oba song here. Yeah! Real. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. I also found a Dore Doro fan song. Oh, that's um, right, I yeah! I can't remember who it was credited to. I think it was Flower. Um, uh, yeah, I think it was Flower. We'll find out. We'll find out. Also, I want to take a quick look at the comments on his page sure. real quick. Sure. Because they're cute. I definitely... The comments on here are generally pretty good. Uh, yeah. I love um, when people celebrate so his birthday was birthdays recently. and anniversaries. Why did someone call him extra version olive oil? <laughs> oh, because Oliver. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all his comments are happy birthday because his birthday was last month uh, as of recording. 11-13... Uh, wow. Wait, nope. 11-23-2020. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He is. This is my favorite one. I'm going to screenshot this. Um, but it's just somebody, hi, I love you. In all caps, hi, I love you so much, baby. Hope you have a good day and are eating well. <laughs> it's so sweet. Um, it's just very, it's very sweet to me, the uh, like personal connection that people get with these Vocaloids. And I think that's like, you know, obviously we mentioned it, but I love that that's so much of a part of their success is human's ability to pack a bond with a drawing yeah. of an anime boy. <laughs> yeah, especially when they don't have much, like, actual story, so it's really, really, really easy to get attached to them, because that's why a lot of people pick favorite characters and things and then start just... Mangle isn't the right word, but, like, just swirl- mushing them up in their hands like a little ball of clay, because when you inject things yourself into a character, that's when you really get attached to them. Hi, my oh. name is Rook, and I'm obsessed with the character Clavier Gavin because of this exact reason. <laughs> Stop. Um, but no, I definitely think like different producers, like just even Miku's for an example, mm. are really, really different kind of when you look across the spectrum of people who use Miku. Oh lot. yeah. She, certain certain vocaloids will take on, you know, characters and have identities within these I mean, worlds. And it's like it's yeah. so cool. I think one of the most interesting examples to me that is still current is uh Pinocchio P's use of Miku. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. Pinocchio yeah. P's yeah. Pinocchio like P's. Uh, visualization of Miku is like so specific and part of that is also the art style but also like what Miku gets used for in Pinocchio P's songs oh yeah right yeah like I've seen people in the comments of Pinocchio P's videos be like hey can I buy birch of your specific Miku yeah <laughs> right yeah and and I think that that's so cool I love and it Vocaloid, Vocaloid is cool it's cool Vocaloid is I love cool. things that enable it's creativity cool um Aster do you want to talk about your second one Yes. Okay. So here's also, my sweet baby daughter. It's Ruby. Just to interrupt, Ruby. because I got struck with a f- feeling of paranoia. We are all recording, right? We've all checked that your desk is are working. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay, yep. Good. yep. <laughs> um, I'm watching my waveform. Continue. So yes. So <laughs> uh, Ruby was one of the first like English Vocaloids I had ever really heard because, like I said, I was very used to people. Oh man, this V4 standard picture looks cool as hell. Yeah, her V4 standard is cool as hell. Um, Oh, she's so cute. I don't know if I've ever seen her. Oh, her redesign is so cute. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen her. Yeah, I love her. Um, So she was like the first time I'd I'd really heard an English vocalite and I was like, holy shit, that sounds like English because 
like I said, I was very used to people trying to tune Japanese Miku to speak English, and it yeah. Eh. Oh my Bad. god, I didn't... Whoa, I didn't know that Natasha Allegri is the one that did a redesign. Yeah. Oh my god. So, if you look at this debut and this the, the <laughs> embed picture, she is white. It's not supposed to be. Um, uh, her developer hinted that her voice provider, which is not white, which may have influenced her design. So she's... Uh, like, obviously she doesn't have a... She doesn't have like a canon race, really, but she is implied to. They're like she's not white in some way. Um, <laughs> this concept skin tone was based on Misha's mother, as she wanted Ruby to represent not only her but also her family. Uh, Ruby is also voiced by a very long time um, Vocaloid fan, Misha, Cute. who I think also has an Utau, but I don't. We'll talk about Utau's in a minute. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll talk about Utah. That's a whole. That's a whole other thing to talk can. about. Yeah, this episode might end up being a little long, but it's fine. Yeah, it's um, a positive space. Um, and, I'll let you guys know when we hit our hour. Yeah. So yeah, I was like mistaken for a long time and thought she was like the only Angloid, but she's not. <laughs> no. Um, but she does no. sound really good, and the <laughs> song I have for her is pretty. It's not like a deep cut or anything, but it's Unbreakable by Kira featuring Ruby. Um, straight up, like, if you want English vocaloids, mm. go to Kira. She sounds so good. <laughs> I love her. Um, she is inspired by, like, sporty American fashion. She looks Bronx. very sporty. I love it. She's so um, sporty. Though I do, like, uh, uniqueness and simplicity were major aims during the design process. From the beginning, sneakers were a must for the outfit, but her skirt was <laughs> rolled out. The belt, shorts, and hairstyle came from the producer's desire to add a few anime aspects in order to fit more the ideal Vocaloid style. So, like, She's so cute. She really is a good fusion of, like... She looks like a character I want to draw fan art of. I, I love yeah. her. I'm literally obsessed with her. I think you um, should draw fan art of her, Aster. I think I should do this. Also, she has a secret unreleased um, voice bank oh. uh, that was just, it was recorded but never released. So, uh, secret bilingual. Um, also, she doesn't have a lot of lores as she's on the newer side. She was uh, first made available in Vocaloid 4. Um, and she's 15. Pink. <laughs> she's pink. Boy, she's pink. So, yeah, I don't have, like, a whole lot to say about her because she's on the newer side, but I just wanted to be, like... That was, I remember hearing her for the first time and being gobsmacked that a Vocaloid <laughs> could sound like that in English. I'm honestly still so surprised when people um, make them sound great in English because, like, obviously I don't know Japanese. I don't know what the Vocaloids actually sound like, how accurate they are to Japanese or not, because I don't mm. speak it. I don't know what it's supposed to sound like. But when I find ones that are in English, it's so impressive to me. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I, I know what you're saying! <laughs> <laughs> And, and yeah, that's that's really that's why I wanted to talk about her because I think she's a really cool and mm. good sounding. I mean, obviously it's all down to the tuning, but yeah, it's also it's also a little bit up to the voice bank. <laughs> yeah, well, good tuners make vo- make good voice banks astronomical. Good tuners make mediocre, like not mediocre, like le- le- less good voice banks really really nice. But yeah. it, um, if you have a bad voice bank. And you don't know how to tune? It, no. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. Yeah. It's bad. But yeah, It's unfortunate. Yeah, my other ones are V1 and V2, or VY1 and VY2. I don't know how you're supposed to say them. I don't have much to say about them. I just think they're interesting because they're objects. And, I think, um, yeah, they're not so... I don't, uh, I don't remember on, whose, on which one's page it was, but I know that one of them actually, like, kind of had a weird reception because nobody was like, why is it just an object? <laughs> I think it's so weird. I love it. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's so... Yeah, uh, they're both... They don't have genders, obviously. Um, Cause but they, uh, but the, the uh, V1 is a feminine voice bank, and it was originally a hairpin, but is now just a big fan. And V2 is a masculine voice bank. And is a sword. And is a sword. And is a sword. He's and I just, specifically a what was it? Da, 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 da. It's a specific type of sword, but I don't remember where it says it. Let me just control F sword. <laughs> sword. Never mind. I did nothing. It's somewhere in here. Ah, Wakizashi. Ah, there we Side go. Side inserted sword. It's a tr- traditionally made Japanese sword by samurai in feudal I th- Japan. 
<laughs> I think there should be Vitu's Vi Vi sex is sword. What? <laughs> I think that Vitu's like gender or sex should be sword. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be very good. For no real reason, I just think it would be funny. It would be if, funny. If gender was sword. <laughs> Uh, I do want to tab over to the songs they've been used in, because I don't know if any of them are, like, notable. So I don't know if any of... Maybe I guess Alex would be able to more say, because um, he knows more songs. I remember Cyber Thunder Cider. Yeah, it's... I've heard that, but I a lot of these are not... Mm -hmm stuff that i'm super familiar with yeah um yeah. i i also i really like the idea of you want to be too because like i said i like things that enable creativity which means that when you give people objects that means they're going to make human versions of them and it's very fun to me to see people's different versions i love mm -hmm. vi one and vi two gajinkas basically yeah they're, so good. They're, all they're so good so good although my personal favorite is when people do just draw the sword in the face. it's great it's it's also extremely good yeah Oh, yeah. There's a lot of covers by uh, Mio Dio Da Vinci. Yeah, well, not a lot. I think it's uh, six. But yeah, Mio Dio has used uh, V2. Yeah. yeah and um, those are interesting, too, because Mio Dio usually puts out like two different versions, a deeper one and a, a, a higher voiced one. So it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll make sure to. Um, yeah, you're going to make a playlist later. <laughs> I'm going to make a playlist later, so I'll put a couple yeah, of Yeah, make sure uh, to attach it to the Wiki Boys account and not, like, your personal YouTube. That would be weird if I did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll make sure to credit everybody we've been talking about. Mm. Um, see the description of this video. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think, like, it, it's weird that there are, like, names that keep coming back up, even if um, they're only people who do covers. Mm. I still think that's, like, a cool part of the Well, uh, th that is well <laughs> I really, really, really like Mio Dio's covers. <laughs> that's a me thing. I, you, you absolutely introduced me to Mio Dio, and mm. Mio Dio does not use a lot of super popular vocaloids to my memory. Uh, um, I think the most popular one's probably been Fukase. Yeah, yeah, and he's a weird little guy. I also don't know how um, to pronounce that. I should have looked. <laughs> Let me put Fukase in the yeah, Google. Fukase. What? It, it, yeah, it's food. Oh, okay, second. thank God. Um, but I love that. Like, I love people who are just like, I'm gonna make these vocaloids my my thing. Yeah, I think that's cool. Um, producer, uh, well, no, I don't, I don't know if he considers himself a producer, but uh, Rev Revelocity is a Revolution Flash. Uh, for a while there had adopted some abandoned vocaloids, which I think is just very very sweet. <laughs> I know. I mean, you could. You could love Miku, but you could also love a sword. <laughs> <laughs> um, which vocal... Uh, ooh, can I find the page for this one? Because I've never actually heard of this vocal one before. Um, sorry, this is a bit of a tangent. <laughs> I just couldn't remember which one of the ones that Rev adopted was. Quote, unquote, adopted. Uh, it's like Origami Eye? I'm not sure how to pronounce this. I've never heard of that. Mm. Never heard of that. It's a completely abandoned project, if I remember correctly. Interesting. Um, very interesting. Yeah. I think it's sweet. I like that there's people out there that just take up these more or less unknown or abandoned vocaloids. It's nice. <laughs> I like to oh, think Oh, Origami Eye is a Utah, too. So, hmm? okay. Origami Eye is a Utah. Oh, okay. Yes, that's right. Also, is that how you pronounce it? Oh, uh, it's Utah. I say Utah. I, Utah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce anything. So. I also don't know what it means i could look it up i know i looked it up before but my memory is bad um i mean so yuta is song so it's mm. something along those lines meaning to sing yeah oh, all right okay <laughs> do we want to move on to our third one yeah sure yeah um so my one which is something i decided to pick like one of the more current popular ones mm. besides miku um i go i went ahead and grabbed flower because I'm, I like flower. I'm so glad one of us talked about flower. Because... I, I, if someone wasn't going to take flower, I was going to. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love um, to think about flower. Flower is good. Um, flower is good. Oh, Flower, I think, is really interesting to me because um, f her voice bank is, like, super androgynous. Yeah, her voice is also super powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people just go, like, it, it's fucking whatever 
any, any gender goes. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Flower, um, I think, is peak gender envy. <laughs> I have gender envy for a lot of vocaloids. <laughs> yeah. I Which mean, I get that because but... it's like a bunch. A lot of the male ones, especially, are allowed to dress like flamboyant. I know. I mean, the thing about me is that I'm, I'm not I'm not bragging. I feel for anybody that doesn't have the cookie cutter gender experience. But I, I, I am very much the cookie cutter gender experience of thin more has less chest and is very androgynous looking so i have so much gender envy for vocaloids that just look like girls but are allowed to be per- perceived as boys even if that's not correct flower is oh god flower is so good yeah. flower is the the thing i find really super interesting is that um she is specifically affiliated with honeyworks yeah i didn't know that before looking at her page yeah honeyworks is a whole other thing Honeyworks is a whole other thing. So Honeyworks and Kega Pro are like two things we could talk about. Oh yeah, um, yeah, those could be episodes. episodes, honestly. Um. So, the, uh, her. Let me find the actual part on the song because I'm just part on the page because I'm just uh, uh, scrolling. Yeah. Do, 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 do. We, we um, should really make like Control F notes in our notes for episodes because we so often end up being like, wait, I need to scroll and look for it. <laughs> We're bad with this. <laughs> We've been doing this for a year and we're still bad at it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so in April 2014, uh, Flower was promoted through a Honeyworks original song. Um, so the character rights still are owned by Gynoid, mm. but um, Honeyworks like released the first song and kind of like premiered her, mm. which I think is a cool thing for a group of producers to be able to do. It's given early access. It's like, this is yours now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wild. Um, and also an interesting thing that um, I found. Some people just call her V-Flower. Yeah, well, that's her proper name v- is V-Flower, I think. Uh, it's not her proper name. It's the name of her software. Oh, right. Duh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the it's the product name. So a lot of people call her by her product name. Yeah. You end up seeing that a lot in, like, the song titles. Mm-hmm. Um. Also, she is intentionally uh, androgynous. Yeah, she's so meant to make you confused. <laughs> she's meant to make you confused. Um, Which, again, the, the... gender. Gender. It's, again, gender. Um, her design notes, I think, are very funny. Um, the official Twitter account said the design was meant to reflect how a flower herself is now uh, a perfect flower, having both pistol, long-haired version, and stamen, short-haired version. So yeah, that could that also confused people. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, I look at flower. I feel gender, and now I have a whole bunch of songs I want to talk about. I want to especially yeah. talk about villain, which is literally about gender, or specifically yeah, gender dysphoria, that was a... and using flower. I'm like, yes, let's go. <laughs> let's yeah, specifically go. Yeah, that was the first one on my list. I'm like, yeah. okay, we have to talk about villain. <laughs> I love that villain blew up. I'm so glad villain blew up. I love that villain blew up. I want to talk about gender dysphoria. I want to talk about gender dysphoria and I want to talk about villain. (laughs) Um, Yeah, absolutely. Probably one of my favorite flower songs. Mm -hmm. It also has official English translation, which I think is really cool. Uh, A few do. It also references Duran Duran, which is cool. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Really good. Really good. Really good. Uh, Villain is a good song. You should listen to basically every cover of it if that exists. So good. I love it. (laughs) Oh, uh, Dong Dang's cover is actually listed as notable. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah, it's a good cover. Dong Dang just really nice covers. Everyone listen to Dong Dang's covers. Please listen to Dong Dang's cover of I Wanted to Dance in Your Pulse. Ah! I'll cry. (laughs) By Pecan, please, (laughs) everybody. All right, that one's also going to the list, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I like villain a lot. I listen to it because I am trans and evil. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I want to go crazy um, stupid and be gender about it. Mm-hmm. I also didn't know that Alien Alien was originally a flower. Yeah, song. Yeah, I didn't either because to me this is a so song. <laughs> this is a so song. Um, I also thought it was originally Miku. No. Um, it's so easy oh, to assume that one. some songs are originally Miku. But the timer is up, so we have to go fast now. I know. <laughs> I like Alien Alien because the loop gets stuck in my head very easily. Yeah. I won't talk about it a lot. I'll just put ones. it in the list. And then um, 
there's Waswald, which is one of those songs that you don't like the original version at no. all. <laughs> <laughs> but all of the covers are absolutely fantastic. Well, I said before, but me use cover of Waswald yeah. is like in my brain. That's the quote unquote is... canon version of Waswald. Mm-hmm. Same with Callboy, honestly. Yeah. Callboy, I have a I have a different version that I like, but I can't Callboy is the less name. rigid for me, but when it comes to Waswald, mm-hmm. it's like I don't want to listen to anybody else's covers for me. <laughs> and because we're talking about Waswald, I want to flip into talking about Nails Fruit. Oh, okay. Um, I love that you were like, we need to speed up, and you're like, I'm talking now. I'm talking now. I'm talking fast now. It's fine. Um, uh, this is one of the producers that I had on my list, so I will yeah, remove is... them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yes, yes, they're yes, particularly... yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I, th- I find them particularly notable because they have affiliation with a very specific artist, yes. uh, Wilma. And Wilma's videos elevate yes. these songs it- from very good to absolutely fantastic. I have a note right here. I'm going to paste my note, which is honorable mention anything Wilma has done art for. It's... <laughs> right? Uh, I, right? I very rarely... Even though music videos are, like, one of my biggest art inspirations, when I'm just listening to music, I don't watch the videos, obviously. But when it's mm-hmm. a Wuma video, if I know if I see Wuma's art, I'm going to click on a video. It doesn't matter yeah. who's singing or what it is. If it's Wuma's art, I'm clicking on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're also um, kind of notable for the fact that they're one of the artists that have like an in- internal universe of songs. Yes. Mm-hmm. So if you look at uh, Sharma, Shama, Sharma, Shama, Shama, which is um, Shama. Uh, Kilma and uh, Waswald, which are all the same universe. Yes. I think that's super interesting that some producers will just say, Go for it. There is a universe attached to my music. My city. <sighs> it's so good. My, I love it. The lore? Fuck you. It's in the songs. Find it. <laughs> and there's people that look for this stuff in these songs. It's so good. I love culture. It's so good. Yeah. Nils Fruit has done a lot of good songs that I care about. Mm. I, I listen to Yes Man fucking constantly i go hard as fuck for traffic jam that's my traffic jam is great it's so it's so fucking catchy (laughs) you will have that bitch in your head for days (laughs) no No! No! (laughs) (laughs) Um, okay uh and that was kind of what i wanted to talk about (laughs) primarily there (laughs) Yes. Um, Is it my Yeah, so you guys want to take your yeah, third? Yeah, so it's your third. Okay. Mine's a little bit complicated. We're going to talk about Cassandra. Oh, Tato. your story. Yeah. So, oh, Teto time. Yeah, so Teto and the song Triple Baca permanently, <laughs> not permanently, I know better now, but like for years. She's 31 years my, old, sorry. We, I have to, I, mm, okay. So, Cassandra Teto was a troll Utau. Uh, like, made up as a fake April Fool's new vocal aid release. I didn't know that. Turns out she got super fucking popular. Uh Popular enough um, that one of her achievements is she's the first Utau character to appear in Project Diva. God. Like, she -hmm. is so fucking popular that, like, she's made guest appearances and official vocal aid God, that's wild, because to me, Teto is, like, an object of the past. I haven't seen her in so long. So... Like, she is super, super popular, and I'm very proud of her for that. Um, So, yeah, uh, an Utau, I should explain, is a voice bank for a similar program. Yes, um, it lets you you use your own voice, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's very, very easy for people to make Utau. So they got a little more popular, it seems, in sort of like the homebrew sort of side of Vocaloid, where people just make their own voice bank. (laughs) And so, you know, I love it. She started as a, you know, fucking troll, troll thing. It's and very iconic. Like Project Diva. Um, <laughs> she is a 30 year one year old chimera who loves bread. In chimera years, she's 15, oh but in human years, she's 31. Oh, okay. Um, this is nebulously <laughs> canon because of Kasane territory by. Uh, Zune, oh my god! Z-U-N. 
Um, it's like a parody song, but it's like kind of literally considered to be the like world is mine of Utao. <laughs> um, there's a little bit on her Utao page, which I'll also link. It's, yes, because there's a separate, there's a completely sort of, separate wiki for Utao stuff, which makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a little bit more of like her lores. Oh, her page is locked, huh? Well, oh, something happened here. Yeah. Um, Not surprising. I think, I think Utahs are kind of kind of like this. That's true. Um, but she like has a Nendo, you know. Um, she's oh, so well loved for an Utah, and that's part of the reason I originally thought she was a Vocaloid. Also, <laughs> visually, she looks a lot like Miku. Like yeah. she looks like a pink Miku. I mean, she has the same arm thing as she right. has the same and, like, everything as Miku. Really, she's she's literally just like pink Miku. Yeah. So, which is completing the trilogy of my pink characters. Um, so the the song that I have for her is uh, it's actually a cover of a Miku song. Um, the cover is made by Nico Nico user Yurahonia. That was put on YouTube in the Dark Ages where uh, Kasane Tento did this herself. So I had to go fucking dig on Nico Nico to be like, all right, when the fuck was a cover of Stargazer with Kasane Tento uploaded at about the time that this could have been posted on, yeah. on YouTube? And so to all the people who were like, I don't know who made this, I literally think it was uploaded. Did you ever comment not, on that video linking to the Nico video? I need to... I need to go do that because I, I, somebody needs to Do it to right go. now. I'm not, no, I'm going to get distracted. I need to continue That's talking. That's true. <laughs> um, it's a cover of a song by Kotsuban P. Um, it's the Miku. Thank you song. for doing the research. Um, Yes, thank you for doing the research. Uh, if you want, like, a proper Teto song that's not, like, a cover, there's always Triple Baka by <laughs> Lamaze P. Triple Baka is, does not have a... Uh, so it's, it has Miku and Kasane Teto singing. Has a third character in it, Akita Neru. She is a fan Lloyd. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, she Just was... Just an OC, sort of, really? She's an OC. She's yellow Miku. Yes. Um, sometimes she gets voiced by pitching either Miku or Kagaman Rin, mm. depending. Um, usually pitched down. Um, and she was made like... Oh, God, she's in Project Diva? Diva? Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> so she got fucking popular enough to be in Project Diva because she was in a huge fucking song. Wow. Even though she didn't sing, she was in fucking Turbo Baka. <laughs> And so she was made, like, there was this sort of thing where, like, on October 14th of 2007, um, a Japanese anime station suddenly broadcasted a program that stereotyped Miku users as, quote, anime freaks without stable work experience. <laughs> Three days later, Miku's pictures became unsearchable on main search engines such as Google and Yahoo Japan. And in the following days, Miku's article was deleted from the Japanese Wikipedia. So she was kind of created as a response. Wait, 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 wait. Is that real or that. is that fan lore? That's real. That's Fuck. real. Okay. Um, Google and Yahoo Japan announced that the search failure was a technical problem and had nothing to do with the advertising agency. The Wikipedia page removal was the result of copyright violation. Hmm. Still, the rumor about the, quote, Miku hating agency persists within the Japanese fandom presently. So she was kind of created. The rebel. Uh, yeah. The rebel uh, one. <laughs> Um, the contributors of such posts of an anti-Miku negative campaign um, were branded as puppets of the agency. God. They dressed up the puppets and made a spoof character for these posts as Akita Nehru. She came to represent the Sundere culture of vocal aid. So she's literally just like Sundere anti-Miku. Does her name mean anything? Um, it does. I just read it. Um, <laughs> her name is a play on words. Akita taken from I can't read this kanji. Or get bored while Nero is from other kanji that says go to bed. Oh, okay. So basically her name is fuck this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, her name is fuck this. <laughs> and so, like, Triple Baka literally ruined my knowledge of <laughs> Vocaloid for years. Like, I was, I was getting kind of back into Vocaloid and I was like, you know, the pink one. And you guys were like, Megarine Luca. I'm like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> the, the pink Miku. You guys are like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, like, the pink I, Miku. Well, because I, like I've said, I wasn't really like, quote unquote, into vocally when I was younger. I just listened to like Gumi songs. So I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I had never heard Triple Baka before. Which is insane to me. Or, because maybe I, I heard like, it once, but I, I didn't know Baka. what you were talking about. 
And so I finally found Triple Baka and I was like, oh shit, yeah, Pink Miku. Shout out to fucking Vocaloid. <laughs> so I just. Triple Baka is a fun song. It's very cute. It's very iconic to me. Fuck that song for ruining <laughs> my idea of what Vocaloids were for years. I love that you just sat with that knowledge for so long while you had two friends that are just obsessed with listening to Japanese music. Mm-hmm. It was so funny. I was like, the pink Miku. Uh, <laughs> and we found her. We found her and I love her. It was Teto. It was Teto. <laughs> Not even a Vocaloid. Not even a Vocaloid. Uh, Oh, that's oh. good. That's so good. And now we're going to talk about Fukase. Yeah, my favorite yeah. one's Fukase. Who's, it's kind of, there's not much to talk about with Fukase. He's a little interesting because um, his look was like a design contest. I didn't know uh, that. Where's the fucking... Uh, Fukase's design was picked through a contest with the winner being uh, Mikuma. The winning design received minor changes in the finished product. His face was originally symmetrical, but in the final design, the left half of his face was more deformed and his eye became completely red. Skin of his neck and left arm was also received the deformed appearance. I don't actually know what the fuck is up with his everything. (laughs) Uh, Also, he's voiced by uh, Satoshi Fukase from Sekai no Oari, which is a band that is good. A band that is good that you should also go listen to. Yes. Who has... It always fucks me up that they collaborated with Owl City once. I always Holy forget shit. that, and then I remember what? it. Yeah, they collabed with Owl City. Okay. <laughs> uh, All right, I'll go find that later. Yeah. Uh, achievements are first newly introduced Vocaloid 4 to be bilingual, and also the first bilingual Yamaha Vocaloid. Uh, going over to his songs tab is a little curse. <laughs> God bless yeah. him. He's He has a pretty good voice bank, and a lot of people are really good at using him. Um... Some of the songs are a little bit of a gut punch. I love you all so much, but I... Seeing Kukuchi Oma on his page makes me feel insane. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did that song, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh that's going to have to end up in the playlist. It's like... That is going to have to end up in the it's playlist, fine. Every, mu- yes. Music is good. Music is um, good. Everybody should listen to all music. And if some of it is stuff that you don't like, you just don't listen to it again. Yeah, that's how music works. <laughs> Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I, I didn't really pick out songs for everyone, but I definitely think um, Fukuse is really good for a lot of covers, and a lot of people use them really well, like I already said, um, especially English ones. Uh, there's a cover by someone that I don't remember that I can find to put in the playlist of Error using Fukuse, which is really good. But um, in my opinion, um, there is someone on YouTube known as Jake S., who did a cover of Jack Stauber's Buttercup using Focus Eye, and it sounds yes. so good. And I yes, think everybody yes, should listen yes. to it. Oh, it's really I... cute and really pleasant, and I really like listening to it. I love... It is my favorite version of that it's song. So... <laughs> it's so Sorry. cute. I love Focus Eye because he looks like an extremely haunted doll, but he has a super pleasant little guy voice, and it's very Yeah, cute to he's me. very much a haunted doll, and some people draw him cuter, and some people draw him cursed, and it's great. <laughs> But I love that, like, regardless of that, he has a very sweet voice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mio Dio also did a cover of um, My Crush Was a Monster Boy using Fukusei, and it sounds really good. Yes, 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 yes. Which is also a Gumi song. It's, oh, my, Mio Dio Da Vinci's My Crush Was a Monster Boy Fukusei cover is so good. It's really good. Uh, we, there's a lot of covers I like. <laughs> Also, um, uh, there are two other things I wanted to talk about, which are, it's just, it can be very, I'll, I'll copy the links but we don't have mm-hmm. to talk about them in detail, which is two Utaos that I really like, uh, Karasu Yosuke and also uh, Kai, which are respectively made by uh, Rev, Revol- Rev Velocities, or Revolution Flash, and Kai is made by... Blah, 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 blah. I forgot the name. Uh, Winter Drive. And they sound very, very, very good. Karasu is one that's really interesting to me because he has, like, five languages, I think. He's Japanese... Chinese, Korean, English, and French, supposedly, but I've never heard the French before. I haven't been able to find it for some reason, which is very powerful to me. Also, Carousel is fun because uh, Rev specifically ships him with a, a specific other one that I don't remember if he's a Vocaloid or Tao. Uh, it should be on his I page, it but it's, very, it's just very fun. I like watching people have fun with their own characters, and I like when people shift them with like quote-unquote canon characters it's fun it's fun 
this one design... day we'll have to talk a lot about your town yes because there's a lot going on this design for kai is going to make me lose domestic he's <laughs> so good um he's so good the artist for kai is also uh Kairos's voice and also artist and owner which I like. Oh, cool. Rev shows up in yeah. a bunch of hotel spaces, and it's very nice. But yeah, Kai is... I like him. <laughs> He's attractive. I like him. <laughs> I feel a little bit He's just a little punk fucker, and I like him. <laughs> he has painted nails, which means I am... Yes, he has piercings and I'm tattoos, and his nails are black, and he looks great, and he wears a lot of tank tops, and I'm... <laughs> Men. Reel it back, reel it back, reel it back, reel it back. What? Uh, but yeah i I just wanted to mention them because those are recs that i have and i'll also i'll copy the producer recs i have which is good luck embedding all of this shit terrible (laughs) so producers i have are rev who i've mentioned multiple times pinocchio p mio dio studio Mm -hmm. and shabo and also is there there's probably someone in here that didn't embed yeah there's people that didn't embed in here i uh, Fairy on YouTube makes some very interesting mm-hmm. videos. Uh, bu- bu- bu. I do enjoy very fairy mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, Pecan uh, had to, yep. uh, goes back and forth between using Vocaloid and original stuff. A lot of people I like also do like original songs and stuff. Oh yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, Tang Ha who did uh, Villain is there. Uh, yeah. They haven't done a lot of stuff, but the stuff that they have it's done good. is very good. I, 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 I have a bunch of people whose stuff I like. Um, and especially, there's people mm-hmm. that I really like that don't do Vocaloid stuff anymore. Like, uh, Hachi doesn't do Vocaloid stuff anymore, but yeah. is a, a foundational um, uh, producer, but just went on song stuff. And I also really like his singing stuff. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I think uh, for one of my favorite trivia points is that... Uh, let me actually... This can get cut out, but I want to bring the name up before I just start saying shit. Come here, Kenji. Yeah. <laughs> I can never remember. Oh, wait, no, I'm silly. Uh, Kenji Yonazo is Hachi. I forgot. Um, yes. But my, yes. I think one of my favorite things ever is knowing that one of the people that did one of the theme songs for uh, Boku no Hero Academia is Hachi. It's Hachi. <laughs> it's fun. It's Hachi like and did... It. Uh, Machinoska, which yes. is like a foundational yes. song from oh, my childhood. Yes. The first was really good. Uh, not to bring cursed energy into the call <laughs> and the episode, <laughs> but Machinoska is very interesting to me because at the time it was popular, it was very good to artists because it was very fun to draw, which means that there mm-hmm. were entire, like... <laughs> I don't want to say a U because it's not the energy, but it was called Matryoshka Stuck, and it was a Homestuck thing where they all were just dressed up like how the Matryoshka video looks. <laughs> and that was... No, because it's a good aesthetic. It's a good aesthetic. And people copy-paste that aesthetic. Hachi's videos are yes. foundational. Ha- it's fucking snowing outside. I'm sorry, what? Oh, you're in Texas. It's fucked up. Okay, it's just mm. thick rain. Oh, okay. okay never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Hachi stuff is all very foundational. And I know that there's people that are very sad that Hachi doesn't do vocal stuff anymore, but oh my god. But just god. go listen to his actual music The music now. that he puts it's out is really so good. good. And uh, it's all so good. Everybody. Every time I listen to Lemon, I lose my mind. Placebo is really good. Uh, Lemon is really good. So just good. go listen Everybody to Stray Sheep. Everybody should listen to Just go listen music. to Stray Sheep. Uh, Everybody listen to Stray Sheep. It's yes. a good album. Um... Yeah, so Hachi was pretty high on my list, too. I also wanted to talk about Enbuna. Oh, yes! Um, yeah, who is now um, Yoroshika mm. with uh, Sweet. Yes. But um, Enbuna has done, like, a lot of stuff for original Vocaloid and then proceeded to move on and do original music instead. I don't yeah. think um, he's produced anything for Vocaloid for a long no, time. No, he also has still... a very complicated relationship with music, which I respect so much. Yes. Yeah. No. Um... <laughs> That's something that you can listener read about in your own time i'm not gonna go yeah, into- we don't have- i say like it's like a curse thing it's just it's a, it's a sit down to read about thing it's a sit down to read about yeah. like you don't want to listen to us talk no. about it. you want to explore that on your own time um and then there's also deco 27 yes i was, I was literally I pulling up deco 27 right now i, I can't believe everybody I needs about to talk about deco 27 everybody go listen to uh, Tommy dissection oh right everybody so listen good. to Tommy dissection it's my favorite song oh um i also had pseudo um, I had, uh, I had Kagi Pro on there just to, like, Oh, yeah, I, I feel like we should talk about Kagi Pro some other time. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to mention it briefly again if you want to go look that up <sighs> on your own time. It's really cool. Yeah. There's actually a page. If you look at the page on the Vocaloid uh, wiki, it is just a link to more pages. Yeah. <laughs> because that's how it's a it giant is. multimedia thing. It is a giant multimedia thing. What we did before this episode was actually watch an episode of the anime derivation deri- derivative uh, of it version. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Yeah. I don't know what to call it. It's br- it's eye candy. Um, it's nice to look at. It's nice to it's, look at. It's, it's basically just, just tw- an, an anime season length Vocaloid video, basically. Mm-hmm. It's and it, the, <laughs> it's really good. It's great. Um. And then, of course, I also had Pseudo. Yeah. Uh, because I like Pseudo stuff. Pseudo stuff is so good. Mm-hmm. Another, like, big flower user. Mm. And then I also had uh, uh, Wawaka. But yeah. That makes me sad, so... Yeah. Yeah. Wawaka yeah. is foundational, and... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think we could give him the respect that we need no. to. Honestly. honestly. This is this is a ding dong podcast. This <laughs> is <laughs> a ding dong podcast. We can't talk about. Yeah, him. I learned recently um, that he's the he was the singer of a band I really like, and it made me feel really sad. I also didn't know that you brought that yeah. to me while we were researching oh, I forget, this. Episode. I forget the name because I have bad brain disorder. Let me. Uh, Hitorie. Yeah, uh, I think it's Hitorie. It's H I T O R I E. Um, I think that I think if we want to put a song from them. In the playlist, uh, the cover of Unknown Mother Goose is really good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, those were the, those were all the producers that I wanted to make yeah. sure that we hit and broadcast into the world. Yeah, we can sit down and pick out like maybe one or two songs from each of them to put them in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Aster, do you did you have anything else? Uh, you guys are certainly a lot more. Uh, sort of knowledgeable about producers but I I think just one thing I wanted to touch on was uh, for like the first time I actually saw a video um, that when it got to the recommendation section he recommended producers (laughs) instead of like Teehee just pick a Vocaloid and go listen and I I think that's really endemic of the shifting culture around (laughs) stopping viewing Miku made this (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and starting saying, these producers used Miku to make this. Yeah. Right. She's I think that's a really it. important shift to happen in the English vocaloid base. Yeah. And I'm 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 really happy to see that happen. And also like the thing that I always thought, like looking back, is kind of insane to say, like, oh go listen to Miku, like any person can turn How? her differently. Yeah. But it's it's not about like, um who, like if there's a voice you like, yeah, um, you know, go hunt it down. Like, like I said, like if you want English covers, Gumi has a good English voice bank. Ruby mm. has a good English voice bank. Mm. But I mean, people tune even just you know any any vocaloid they tune it so differently and they style it so differently. They're just a fucking singer. Yeah, I mean, well, when it comes to tuning, like if you look at Pinocchio P's use of Miku versus um, Pecan's use of Miku, they're completely different sounds. Versus Deco 27, I remember the, yeah. the video that I watched specifically pointed out that Deco 27 leans really heavily into the unnatural robotic sound of, yes. Miku, of Miku to complement a more electronica style. Yeah. And if you don't like electronica, you probably won't like it, but you might like somebody else's take on it. Yeah, like, because, um, you know, it's, I, I wanted it's to so dance insane. in your pulse by Pecan. I, it's a very, very soft sound. Mm-hmm. It's still a robot voice, but it's very mm-hmm. gentle. Right. Like, saying to somebody, go listen to Miku, is like Bizarre. saying, go listen to a violin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so that's why I'm really, really happy to see the shift around how we talk about Vocaloids and the producers. And also, like, I think Brooke made a good point. Like, yeah, they don't, they don't necessarily all want to, like, be in the public eye, which is okay. But I still think I love to see this burgeoning thing of, like, we are going to credit the person who... <laughs> made this music i mean i imagine anyone that makes stuff would like to be credited instead of the instruments right. they use and, <laughs> right, right. Like, i don't so, I, I don't want anyone to ever look at my art and say fucking many bang made this <laughs> that's i think that's a really good sort of you know i don't know who made this credit to many bang uh, like shut shut the hell up <laughs> um it's just um, a tool. Miku is just a tool. I love her and she's blue, but she's <laughs> just a tool. <laughs> right. Um, so before we close out, I want to pick 
like two, three songs that I like that I think people should listen to. Okay. If we got to the end of the playlist and you're like, ah, this isn't worth it, just listen to these last couple of songs. <laughs> um, so number one is A Tome Dissection yes. by Decker 27. Yes. It's very good. And, uh, um, I could, if I can find them, because I'm bad at names, I can also throw a cover I really like into the pot, but I'll have to find it later. Mm-hmm. Um, it's number two, uh, Bitter Chocolate Decoration y- by Pseudo. Yes! <laughs> Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 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 Oh. Um, throwback. Uh, unhappy refrain. Wakoa. Mm. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, I'd say my uh, unknown mother goose is a good one too. Unknown mother goose is also very good if we're going down that discography. Yeah. And then my last one would be uh, Love It by Pinocchio. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are the yeah. ones that I have. My my favorite yeah, from Pinocchio P range. is uh, What's Inside. Mm-hmm. I listen to that also constantly. Good also a good one. I really like Ultimate Senpai, and that's why I picked it for my Miku song, just because it is such an earworm, and it would <laughs> give me an earworm. Like, if if I had a Vocaloid playlist, Spotify wrapped, Traffic Jam would be at the fucking top, because <laughs> it is so catchy. <laughs> it is impossibly catchy. I remember I saw a Flipnote animation of wow. it, and that proceeded to stick in my head. Until I could find the actual song, because the song title was just listed in uh, Hiragana, and I couldn't go find uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if I wanted to, if I wanted to add a specific song, I want to specifically add "Hated by Life" itself because it's a very interesting one to find uh, covers of. Mm. Yes, particularly that Mafu 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 cover, Mafu cover of it is really good. I probably think, one of my favorites. I think any it's cover I've ever specific. listened to "Hated by Life" itself is very good. Um. It's a. Uh, I don't know if we want to put this in the place because it's more complicated to think about. Like I guess the quote unquote ethics of it, but there's a Nico Nico chorus of "Hated by Life" itself that is incredible, which is basically just a mm-hmm. mashup of a bunch of different singers. Uh, probably not mm-hmm. with permission, mm-hmm. but it sounds incredible. Yeah. I think it's like 31 I, people. It sounds amazing. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's it. I think that's it. Yes. Um, and I, I know we've mentioned it, but just to kind of wrap up, like, we're going to be putting this this playlist together since it's we have a bit of time between record and release. The playlist will be yeah. ready. Um, and so that's kind of your, your Since foundational... this is about music, I think it's good to do that. Also because I like to share and I like music and I want people to listen I, to it and like music. I, I would have really, <laughs> you know, benefited from somebody handing me a bunch of Vocaloid songs and be like, just go crazy. That is what Your we did to you. Like, Eventually. And I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. Um, and so I'm glad that we can give a curated experience of that to people who want to be really into Vocaloid. Um, I'd and, be interested in fact, if there's people that don't know about Vocaloid that happen to enter this zone. Because um, it's not like we're Vocaloid scholars. We all just like Vocaloid. Right. Right. Um, I, I wanted to write a fucking essay. You wanted to write an essay. So you can still write an essay about Vocaloid if you want to. I can still write an essay. <laughs> Eventually I will. Not today. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to go through the playlist that we make and cross-check it with my Vocaloid playlist to make sure that like <laughs> I have stuff that I should have. God, my, my playlist is so messy because I have like I have mostly covers in there, but also just like original yeah. Yeah. songs from bands. <laughs> it's yeah, basically just my just have a- music that isn't English playlist. <laughs> that isn't yeah, English or French J-Rock because playlist. French I can mostly understand. Yeah, like, it's great that you have that. It's way too chaotic. I'm like, no, no, I need my yeah. vocaloids <laughs> to be in a quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, this has been Wiki Boys. Yeah. Thank you for sticking with us to 2021. Uh, yeah. I'm going to uh, change our sign off. I'm not going to give us the regular sign off. Thank you for listening. Thank you. <laughs> Do we wanna... um, so you can find. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot we did that. <laughs> you can find us on Twitter at Wiki Boys Pod. Um, you can find me on Twitter at, at Alex Mostly Okay. You can find me on Twitter at Twigwang. And you can find me on Twitter at Nerd of Goodness. All right. Yeah, this has been Wiki Boys. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> this has been Wiki Boys, and welcome to 2021. Fucker. This will be yeah. probably like way into 2021 when this comes up, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> January, it's the first one we recorded. It counts. I get- January has been a wash for me, dude. <laughs> yeah, we're recording this on January 21st. <laughs> So cool, Bob. Twenty fourth. It's twenty fourth. It's twenty. Oh, it's the twenty fourth. Oh, I ha- I forgot. <laughs> I have my date set up year, month, day, not day, month, year. <laughs> <laughs> That's my <all> bad. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs>
All right. Hey, that's emblematic of how January stalled. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Might as well be 2024. <laughs> uh, all right. Thanks for listening. The music used in this episode is Quirky Dog by Kevin McLeod, founded in comptech.com and used under the Creative Commons license.